the 15th of August, 1969, Bombay Street, Belfast. The place where, some say, the troubles began, a conflict that would consume Northern Ireland for the next 40 years. Despite Protestant and Catholic communities living side by side, tensions had been quietly rising. Violence had been increasing between nationalists and unionists within these areas, and the 15th of August 1969 was when it reached boiling point. On this day, my grandparents and their children were among the victims of the burning of Bombay Street, a sectarian attack that engulfed the Falls area. Since the only way my generation, being born into peace, can connect to their history is through limited word of mouth or the media, I decided to go straight to the source, my mum. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Right. So, well, what I remember and what I know now are two different things because what I remember was is flashbacks, flashes of things and memories that I don't know now are the memories or are the things that people have told me but there are there are things that I do remember I remember there was a panic in the air your granny sort of gathering us all up and we had to run from the street because by that stage there was a, a shoemakers at the bottom of our street and that had been set on fire they'd fired pe petrol bombs and then later on that or in the early hours in the morning your granny came to get your granny but your granny just thought she was going to go back and it would have been looted or yeah. there would have been rubble or broken windows or something. She never expected to, to, have, no to, house. to have no home. Although my grandparents returned home to find that everything was destroyed, one belonging had survived, their TV. The only reason why it was saved was because your, your granny put it in the outside toilet because it was a big ticket item in yeah. those days <laughs> to have a TV. It never worked. It never worked no. from what was in the toilet. It was just, it was like a physical memory of what had happened what to us. What been through, yeah. Uh -huh. what's, what's your first sort of feelings when you see it? Just, so it's just sad. Now, looking at the picture where it stands in the museum, what was your first reaction when you saw that? Because I remember going to see it, it was very emotional. I just felt like they were walking towards me, mm -hmm. like they were just walking out of the past. It was just so, um, it was just so heartbreaking. The display in the Ulster Museum tells the story of my grandparents, but as their granddaughter, I've always wanted to know more about how this event went on to impact my family. Give a bit, maybe a bit more of a story to it. Yeah, really. you could find out things that I never knew. Hoping to do exactly that and discover more about my family's history, it felt right that the next step would be to visit the street they once called home. So this is the street that they lived on, just in a, in a house over here. I feel in a way that I should have a connection to it, but, you know, I, I don't, I can't say I do, you know, it's, it's not their house anymore. What does feel more, of, has more of a connection to me is the street itself. You know, I can really feel connected to my family through the street. I, I didn't actually expect it to be this small. Um, and just thinking back to how chaotic it must have been on the day. I think it really goes to show um, with everything, all the memorials everywhere and how the community were able to rebuild themselves. It shows how closely knit that this group of people must have been and how this relatively small place in the world has had such a huge impact on history and on our history. The ripples of this tragedy were felt by many who all have a story to tell including late photographer Jerry Collins, whose aunt lived on Bombay Street. Without this connection, we would not have the earliest known pictures of the burning. After hiding them for 40 years, Jerry passed these photographs on to Frankie Quinn, who I was more connected to than I ever knew. You just want to introduce yourself? Uh, my name's Frankie Quinn. 
I'm a photographer and I also run the, the Belfast Arcade project. I'm a storyteller, I take projects that are long term, you know, some of them end up uh, very long term. The gradual, the, the turn from, the work f sort of turned uh, uh, from presentation to preservation. Because the importance of the work, it's our history, it's a social history. We're just lucky that Jerry was uh, to have the pictures of such an, uh, a, a, a pivotal moment in, in history. Uh, I mean, my jaw hit the floor because I, I just look at the history here. And um, the thing about the Bombay Street was the pictures. Other people came from other areas and says it wasn't just Bombay Street that was burnt out that night. It was like large parts of our town and other areas were burnt as well. There was so much information out there, like the Scarman Tribunal. There was a quote from one of those soldiers and he says it was like um, when they walked into Bombay Street, it was like walking into a scene from a World War II newsreel. And it was, yeah. you know. And you see the devastation. Uh, that's what made those, you could actually, f the, the photographs almost brought you there, you know. There was an artist, a couple of brilliant, brilliant quotes, you mean your grand is, that, that, that's why I, I, most of the quotes are his. A couple of quotes came right out of, jumped out at me, like this, at one stage this, there was a mob running towards him like a pack of wild animals. You know, and you can imagine that there, you know, uh, mixed in with Jerry's pictures, and you could, it just helped to bring people back to how frightening it must have been for them, how terrifying. While I now felt more connected to my grandparents than ever by visiting where they called home and hearing about the impact my grandfather had through his statement to the Scarman Tribunal, something was still missing. Hello! Hello. How are you? How are you? Long time no oh, see. Great. My name is Sean McShane and I was born in a, a district called St James's on the, the, the 5th of February 1943. Who was the name of 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 the August K. Dinyak was in Charlie August Francis. And, uh, you know, they were so friendly. The, the people in that street were so friendly because they didn't know us from, uh, from anywhere. Like, you know, it was, but they got to know us and uh, they ended up trusting us completely. Just Pobble Hack the Kela. Nyard with Curly Kela. Vime Iglo and Ratchis are in my Mechana Hurst's Garmin Tribunal. August Hogmay Fujera Nock Roche Sharov. Oh, he that was, that was his personality. And your grandma was the same. They, they were they weren't unhappy people. Society just broke broke down and that was it. And it took a lot of courageous people for for, for years to try and work on it to try and get some sort of resolution of some kind. And to talk to you, it's amazing. Amazing all those fifty years on. Fifty years ago, my grandfather went to work as a plumber in the Ulster Museum, but little did he know that he would go on to become an integral part of the place that he helped to build, and that their story would educate the thousands that see it every day. Thank you for being here. I believe the photographs are really, really powerful, and that's why partly we've used it at this scale and reproduced it at this scale along with the television that can be seen in the image, and making that connection is really important to people as well as they realise that that is the television from um, from the photograph. It represents that sort of lived experience. I think that's what we wanted to capture was sort of direct testimony from people, whether that's um, through photographs or people have contributed stories in their own words or through objects they've contributed. I think it's, it's a starting point for conversations and it's because it's something that somebody's gone through. It's very personal um, and it's, it's almost more difficult to challenge somebody's own lived experience and their own perspectives on that. I think that the museum has a role to play in that in terms of peace building because we can bring people together in this space and they can experience different perspectives and learn a bit more about it. What's the benefit of us taking an interest in our personal family history? You know, like the whole aim of this documentary is that I'm saying my family has this story, but you know, my neighbour's family probably have a story that's just as powerful. What's the benefit of us taking that interest? For people that haven't lived through the troubles, it's having that awareness of what was like and what happened and some of the consequences or how it um, could escalate or, or things that took place that they understand a bit more about that even as you know the tensions we have at the minute but from a generation that don't realise where that can lead.
What began as wanting to know more about who my grandparents were and how their lives were impacted in such a tragic historic event has turned into so much more. I expected to be talking about how far we've come since the Troubles, but with tensions and violence resurging amidst my journey, the lessons we've learned from the tragedy of Bombay Street are now more relevant than ever. History is a living thing, and to move on from the past, we need to learn from it. Not just through facts and figures, but from the lived experience of those who came before us. We're not to dwell on history, but to grow from it. A man who I never got the chance to know is no longer a stranger to me, but my granda. And my granny Frances, who passed in 2011, has proven her famous saying, your name will go further than your feet ever will. And of course, let's not take out the fact that there was a young lad shot dead, young George McCauley. You know, there was somebody killed that night as well. Yeah, it wasn't just... It wasn't, just, uh, it wasn't structural damage, you know, it was, it was people injured, shot and killed. I think we all still have to remember what happened in the past, but we can't dwell in the past. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to move forward, and that's what your granny and granda did. <laughs>